next up, we have Julian, who's going to be talking to us about prefetching and a library that he's been working on to support that and when we may want to prefetch versus when we may not want to prefetch. So thank you for the little introduction. Um, I'm sorry in advance, I'll show a little bit less code than all the other people you've seen. Uh, there's a link to GitHub, you can see more code later. And let me just put the timer because sometimes I also forget uh, when I speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. Uh, there we go. So yeah, the, the, it's a little street fighting trick or tricks for software engineers. Uh, as the title suggests, it's, hey, let's, you know, there's a cap theorem. Sometimes, uh, well, how about we drop uh, this, this, uh, this requirement on consistency a little bit, or we drop it entirely in certain circumstances. We're going to look at what circumstances that might be. I'm Julien Perrochet. I'm a software engineer by trade. I deal with Scala functional programming, obviously. I'm also into build systems and other fancy things, uh, Twitter, whatever. Um, so let's go. Uh, small uh, table of contents. Just going to look at the environment in which at least I operate as a software engineer and in which you may operate as well. So that might push you to do these things. Uh, then the typical job you may have uh, in there. And uh, then looking at, at what it means to embrace eventual or no consistency. And looking at trade-offs, risks, benefits, downside, and when not to do this. So let's go. Um, a little landscape of enterprise software engineering, at least how I have come to experiences, is that uh, you have somewhere, you have a database, there's a nominus O uh, for Oracle in there. Um, it's a big monolithic thing, you have to use it because that's where the data is. Uh, however, maybe it's a bit slow during the business hours. If you run a huge query, sometimes you just uh, have to be patient. That's the way it is. Uh, you may have an ERP, it's great, has everything you need to know about your customers, whatever, except that the ERP team sometimes says, uh, hey, let's have a random maintenance during the day, and uh, there goes your service. Uh, don't, you know, don't judge, these things happen. Uh, maybe you have some files, files are nice, easy to work with. Maybe they're not local on your machine or in the machine that's running your service, they're not indexed, whatever. That's what you have to deal with. Uh, and you have some messaging buses. Uh, let's say you use Kafka, everything's fine. Maybe use uh, the, this, this nice sponsor uh, uh, service and everything is good, no problem there. You have some internal services. Uh, probably they don't uh, match your current use case, but they're there. Uh, if, I mean, I guess they're perfect if you wrote them. Maybe they're not, but who cares? So that's, you know, that's the building blocks that you have. Uh, that, that's where you're starting. Um, on the left hand, you have customers, maybe they're internal, maybe they're the one giving your business money, whatever. And these customers, they have requests. Uh, and you know, typical request is, hey, display me some data uh, in a nice way, you know. All, all that's, everything that's there, I want to show something, some report, whatever, uh, give it to me in a, in a really great way. And you know, please do it quickly, cheaply, uh, please do it by tomorrow, uh, because we're in a rush. So you know that's that's a good starting point. So anyway, your job. So your your mission, if if you want to accept it or if you want to keep your job, is that you know you will be given uh, a few CPUs. Maybe they're virtual. Maybe they're real ones. You're on premise, wherever. You have a few CPUs. You have uh, a couple jigs of RAM. We're we're writing Scala, so I guess you have a Scala compiler, a JVM. Um, you know, maybe you have multiple multiple nodes of these, but that, that's basically what you're starting with. Uh, so your mission, should you accept it, is you know deliver value. There's this customer, uh, and you have to give him what he wants. By the way, not your mission. I mentioned about this database being slow, whatever. It's, you know, you're not going to fix the overall architecture. You know, you, you may want to talk to your PMPO or to someone in management. That that's something they need to tackle. But your your hands are tied. You you cannot. You have to play with these cards that you're given. So no, no. Hey, let's rewrite all the backend so it's faster, and we don't need to do all these dirty things. That's that's for another day. So you know, how can you get the most out of this landscape uh, very quickly? So obviously, you know, use Zio, use functional programming, use all these nice things that let you be good. Um, but, but that might not be enough, you know. Um, if we're you know, if we're looking at prefetching, just a very, very, like a very short summary about what it is. It's just you know, pre-compute what you need in advance, instead of having a request come in. Oh, I need to show this. Uh, let me go down to the DB, uh, do a query, uh, whatever. Show it to the user. You know, like whatever you might show a user, you're just going to pre-compute it, 
and you know, store it in RAM. And if someone asks, hey, okay, but what if, what if what I need is not in RAM, you just say, well, it doesn't exist. You tell, you know, it's, it's as if it didn't exist. It's in RAM or it doesn't exist. So if we look at our landscape, it just means, you know, on the right, there's these, these little bricks that are brittle that you cannot do much with. Um, and, but, you know, occasionally they work. So if you have a background job, eventually that background job will be able to load them. Uh, you know, with, with the talk we just saw before, it's like this thing running in the background, put it in memory, and then you, your service can run even if the, like if the underlying data sources are not there. You know, and then you get fast replies for the requests that come in. You know, easy, easy peasy, you're done. Um, so why would you do that? <laughs> so, well, obviously you can. Um, in general, I think RAM is, is seriously undervalued as a place of temporary storage. Because one, one way of doing this, like, oh, this is slow, we need to cache things, so I need to ask, yeah, someone needs to set up some, some distributed cache or something. Eventually, you will have these things in a major organization, but maybe, you know, maybe you're in a place where you don't have these. You're, you're in a rush, you, you need to deliver something fast. And so, you know, what's easier to request between, can you please set up and maintain, because you don't want to do this yourself, you know, set up a distributed cache, I need something that's fast, that works well, you know, make sure the network is fine, everything. Or can you just, you know, give me an additional gigabyte or two of RAM? That's, that's probably the easiest you can get. If you're with Kubernetes, anything, just give me more RAM, you know, I can, I can just fit everything in there, and I'll be happy. So, you know. Benefits for this, obviously, uh, you know, you get, you get predictable performance. Uh, things are fast if they're there, fast if it's not. It, it's slightly different from a cache because, you know, if you have a cache miss, you're still going down to the DB. If the DB is slow or if the DB is gone, uh, then, then you have, you know, you have your tail latencies are going up. So, okay, you have a downside. If it's not there, it's not there. But, you know, it's, it's still fast. You, you get a request. You have everything in memory to, to reply to that request. Uh, things are available, depending what services you're building, you're happy if, uh, you're, you're super happy if, if, uh, if, you know, maybe, okay, Oracle is down, the ERP is down, but you still, uh, you, you know, you're still replying to the user, and if they're just looking at some read-only thing, read-only information, maybe they, they don't need to be aware that you're having a huge outage, you're just, hey, you want to read your profile data, here it is. Um, Interestingly, you can also, you know, this little universe you build in your RAM, uh, you, can, you can make it so it's consistent and, you know, there's no, it's not, oh, maybe this request is going to hit the cache and the other requests won't. So even though you're doing things in a proper way, the thing you return to the, to the query might not be entirely consistent because you have some things that were in the cache, some things that's, that's coming from, from somewhere else. So you know, if you do this in the right way, you can, whatever is in your RAM, you can at least build it up so that when you show it to the user, it's consistent. Um, it's also super easy to, to wipe it out. You know, if you change the logic of what you're displaying and of the cache things, you know, re restart your service and it's gone. You, know, you don't need to, to think of, okay, now I have to invalidate this cache. Um, you know, just restart the service and whatever dirty things you were doing before that were wrong, they're gone. Um, there's just, if you take a little step back, if we look at the benefits, like if you're a PMPO or if you have to, to convince your PMPO of something, like with this thing, you can iterate quickly, you can do experiments, and depending on what you're doing, you can get a puck out of the doors faster, because even if you're depending on slow things, you say, we don't care, we, we put everything in the RAM, we're fast, and uh, maybe, maybe the process gets more buy-in because, like the project gets more buy-in because we get to deliver faster. Um, so, you know, you get to do more experiments and you can unlock more use cases. Obviously, there's downsides to this. Um, yeah, so if you have to write somewhere, you have to go write that somewhere. So if you have to go to Oracle or whatever, then you, you need to do the write. So that applies for read-only stuff only. Uh, it's eventually consistent. You have to understand, uh, I mean, it, it's an amazing foot gun to be doing this because if you forget about all these things, you're like, yeah, great, uh, nice performance, everything, but uh, yeah, you, you can, you know, you can, you, you can shoot your leg off, basically. Um, whatever you're doing, it needs to be fitting in RAM, and of course, you know, if, if this work you're doing in advance, it takes hours, then your service may take hours to start, and that's something you probably don't want. So there's, there's this little space where, of problems that you can solve with this, and it doesn't mean you can solve everything. And of, as I said, easy to overdo, easy to shoot your 
food away. So final words, usually, I mean, I come from, at least in my job, it was always about experimenting. You know, you, you write a service once and then you, you know, it's an experiment. Maybe you throw it away or if it, uh, you know, if it fails, it's gone. If it's valuable, you keep it and you keep iterating on it. It's just to say like this, like tooling, such, such prefetching, like, uh, so this library for which there's a GitHub, uh, you know, it, maybe it's, it's useful when you begin and then when you're, oh, this is made mature, it's maturing, you're going to actually do things cleanly and replace them. So at least for me, it's a way, you know, get, get to value faster. It's clumsy, but it's fast. And if it's fast, a uh, higher chance that someone is happy with it and higher chance that it's buy-in and that you actually make something out of it. So again, um, I'm, I'm done. It was nice having you here at Zai World. Uh, you can check out GitHub. So there's a bit of code, there's a bit of documentation, just very simple examples. It's a, it's a small library. Uh, if you have complaints that uh, you know, I shouldn't be doing these things and talking about dropping consistency, there's, there's always Twitter for the, for the, for the wars. And uh, I have other ramblings uh, on my blog. So happy to also have a discussion uh, when we eat later on. So yeah, thank you. Thank you.